Welcome to the Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo. Welcome to the show. So it, today is Tuesday. This is going out on Mint Wave radio station. You can just ask Alexa or go to the website camrobertscoaching.com forward slash Mintwave hyphen radio to listen live and see the schedule for the rest of the week. If it's by a podcast, again, come and look at who else we have on our podcast network. So again, same website, forward slash podcast hyphen network, and you can download the app for Apple and Android. And please feel free to any to follow and subscribe to any podcast that take your fancy leave a review, leave a comment. And today's episode is 131. And today we have the lovely Hilary Rose, who is a kidney health coach. And we're going to be talking about people with chronic illnesses, not just kidney disease, but chronic illnesses and how they can still have a holiday. They can still enjoy a holiday. So what are the solutions around that? Now, I'm your host, Karen Roberts, and we provide a platform for coaches, consultants, therapists, and healers to get their message heard to the people who need to hear it. As owners of Mintwave Radio Station and the Raising Vibrations Podcast Network, we also have a directory of coaches to come and find the right fit for you. So welcome to the show, Hilary. Thank you for taking your time out today to be on here. Hi, Karen. I'm so happy to be here. It's it's great. The feeling is great. And I just awesome. love what you do. You know, you help people like myself. So yeah, I'm so happy to be here. Well, thanks for taking your time out. So for the listeners, Hilary helps kidney patients book their ideal holiday, which gives them the complete peace of mind to create dream memories. She too is a kidney dialysis home nocturnal patient. She had a kidney transplant in 2007 from her husband that failed immediately. And now she's living her life to help and encourage kidney patients to travel and get out of the rut, rejuvenate, relieve stress, and have an enjoyable life. She also encourages kidney patients to do dialysis self-care, either in the centre or at home. The aim is for the patient to do dialysis at home, whether PD or HD. She advocates for kidney patients in her community. So you have a story to tell, Hilary. So would you like to, first of all, share with the listeners, how did you get here? Okay, so in 1992, I was diagnosed with um, kidney failure and I had an open renal biopsy to find out what the cause was. And unfortunately, they, they, they still couldn't find out what the cause was. So I knew since 1992 that I would eventually end up having kidney dialysis, which I really did try to avoid. I tried different diets. I tried different medication, different alternative services or alternative treatments, but they didn't really work. So in 2007, my kidneys actually failed and I went straight to transplant. And as you mentioned earlier, it was given by my husband and unfortunately it failed immediately. So from then, this is where all the brain started working and started ticking because I ended up in in a satellite unit where I was dialyzing and I noticed that people weren't going away, people weren't going on holiday. It was just in and out. You were in there for four hours, you had your treatment, you came back home, you slept, you were tired, you were exhausted, you got up and you went back the other day, you went back the next day. So I was working full time. So my schedule was, I was up at seven, at work at nine, finished work at five, from five, went to the dialysis unit, did my four hours, finished at 11 at night, 
got home at 12, had a shower and I was back on it. So that was my life. And I was like, well, people need to take a holiday. You know, you need to get out of this rut. You kind of feel stuck because you're connected to this machine. You're living your life by this machine, but you need to get out of it. You need to give it a rest, but Mm. you're not rest, not when you're a kidney patient on dialysis. Unfortunately, when you go on holiday, you still need to have your treatment. So I then inquired, and at the time we had a coordinator who was able to take that responsibility from you and book your holiday. But as you know, the different changes within the NHS, that job was no longer there. So it was given to the patients to do. So as a patient, you now had to find your own dialysis unit, get that booked in advance before you can even book your hotel. You need to make sure your dialysis is arranged first. So as I was going through the process, there were so many hiccups along the way, but I made it and I went on holiday and I had some lovely holidays abroad, especially in Europe, because you have a European health card, which is now the global health European card. And you can use that for dialysis. So in, the, in, in Europe, you can actually get your dialysis free and some countries within, the, within Europe you have to pay for. But if you have your global health card, health insur- insurance card, it will pay for your dialysis. So I, I managed to, to get that. And my first trip was to Spain. I went to Spain and I had a lovely time. I went to dialysis. It, it was near the hotel, so we were actually able to walk there and come back or pay a really small fee, like six euros to get there. And I had a wonderful holiday and I was like, isn't this fantastic? But because of the, the, the bumpy road that I had in order to book it, I then said, why can't I do this for others? Why can't Mm. I help other people and encourage them to have a holiday? Because my own experience of going to the satellite unit, it was a brand new unit and everything was white and and everything was spotless. So you actually felt a little bit uncomfortable because it wasn't quite, quite right. And I said to, you know, and I said to myself, Every time I was going to the unit, it kind of made me sad. I kind of went down, you know, and I said, if I'm feeling like this and I'm new as a kidney patient, how are others feeling? You know, so why not give them something to look forward to, which is a holiday? It might not be everybody's go-to thing, but if it is, then why not take a holiday? So oh, and it's it's it's, 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 it's important yeah. for everybody. It's important for everybody, isn't it, to de-stress, mm. to ha- to be able to unwind. This does have a knock-on effect on your health. So if you're already you you've already got a chronic illness, it's 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 you know unless you're really really mentally strong and, and you're really aware of it, it can bring you down. And then, like you say, mm. if you're going, you're you're having to work on top. And, you know, so the stress of everything and then continually going to sit for, I mean, I don't think people realise how much stress that's going to be caused. You know, for somebody just working a job, just doing the nine to five, they get to a stage where they really need a holiday, a chance to unwind, which is going to make you feel better, which is going to improve your health. I mean, the whole thing. So why do you think, what is the main stumbling blocks as to, you know, why it is, has people, have people just sort of almost given up if they've got a cro- chronic illness and they think it's just too much hard work or too much extra stress to actually, to actually book a holiday? What, why are they not going? Well, I, I, 
I do think it is the organization of it all, especially as a kidney patient, you can't get up and go. So, you know, prior to me having that illness, I would a holiday advertised, I would book it and, you know, and I could go, I could get a good deal. But now I can't, it's not I can't get a good deal, but the deals will come and go because there's three months planning in advance for a holiday. Oh, so, wow. Yeah, you need that time to plan it. So as I said, the first thing you need is to book the dialysis. So you choose your destination and then you, and then you say, okay, I need dialysis. Where are the dialysis units in this, in this country? Then you go and you source that information, which is not always easy because you could type it in Google, but they're not always found. So you may have to go back to your unit or go back to a kidney association or organization and they've got a full list of places where you can go and dialyze. Then you contact the dialysis unit and then you have to find out if they've got availability. And many units, especially since lockdown, are only having two or three spaces available for a holiday patient. So they could only schedule perhaps four weeks out of the whole year to give to somebody visiting their country who is on holiday. So it's on a first first serve, first serve first come, first serve basis. So you're not guaranteed that you can actually get a space in that unit the time that you want it. So if they don't have it, then you've got to think of somewhere else or you think of another country. So that in itself is not is not is not an easy or a win win situation straight away. So after you after you found that place, you book it, you confirm it, then you need to confirm back with your consultant whether you are fit to travel. And he oh. can turn around and say, unfortunately not. You know, you could have your bloods done, and your bloods come back and they're not you know, 100%, you may not be able to travel. So that's another issue. So you've just got to, you know, look after yourself, keep yourself fit, you know, so that you can go on a holiday and your, con and your consultant can confirm that. So once that's all confirmed, the next step is medical insurance. You now need to make sure that you can get medical insurance because if you're a kidney patient, you could also have other complications. And if you've got other complications, those need to be considered as well. And then you need to make sure you get medical insurance. Once you've, get, once you've got the medical insurance, you've got the confirmation that you are fit to travel, the, this unit is there, you're good to go. Right. And so it sounds like all these things that people have got to remember to do and remember to check and then double check. And do you think that is what puts people off because they just think, oh, oh it's yeah. too much hard work and I don't want to be disappointed if they turn around? Yeah, a lot of it is fair and disappointment that they may not be fit enough to travel. They may not right. be well enough to travel. Or what happens if I get sick when I travel? So you've got all these fears around it. But for me, and what gives me the confidence is once we've passed that process of a unit is willing to accept you, your consultant says you're fit for travel, you've passed, you can travel insurance, that alone gives me confidence that I am able to travel and I want to be able to share that with others so that they too can feel confident. Yes, we are not well, we have illness, 
you know, we may be suffering, we may have pain, but we can travel. And that's exactly what I want to do. I want to encourage people in these situations to have the confidence to travel. Right. And what because really when they're when they're looking at like, well, what are the actual benefits? How much? I mean, share with the audience for you on your first holiday after you've been, you know, having to go and and spend all this time on dialysis and the stress of everything. How did you feel when you were able to get on holiday? I mean, really, that I suppose that's the big selling point, isn't it? Is is that what it's actually going to do for you and how you feel, which is going to have a knock on effect, hopefully to your health, overall health. How did you feel that first time being able to go away and it to be all sort of smooth sailing and the real benefit? It was absolutely fantastic. And every holiday I have, I feel rejuvenated. I feel like I have come alive because, as I said before, that routine that we are into, yeah, it's a routine, it's good. We know exactly what is happening day by day. But when you go on holiday, you do exactly what you want. It's really nice. Yes, you have your slot. You know, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you've got dialysis at this time, it's going to finish at that time. So that's all organized. That's all done. You now just have to live every other day and enjoy it. And mm. for me, that buzz of that holiday, being in the sun, lying on the beach, drinking cocktails, <laughs> and just, you know, the sun beaming down, the vibes, you know, the being in a different environment, just alone, traveling on the aircraft, meeting friends, meeting new people. All of that is just such an excitement. And the benefits of it is, is that it can last up to three to four weeks after the event. So when you've been on holiday, yes, it's nice you want to go home, but you want to kind of stay there because it's, you know, the vibes are nice. You're just relaxed. You've got no stress. You know you're coming home and you're going back to the routine, but that buzz can stay with you, as I said, up to three to four weeks. Right. So, you know, and then yeah, and then if you know it runs time. smoothly, you can you know you can do it again. So then you've always as human beings, we all need something to look forward to, don't we? Yeah. And more so if you're having to have the extra stresses that that other people without any chronic illnesses are not having. So they're not really going to totally understand this. But mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, you know, so then it's even more important for these people to have something to look forward to and be able to completely unwind out of the, the day to day stresses. So for you, so you call yourself a, a destination concierge. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that is that how you would describe yourself? Yes, because I encourage you to choose your destination and I will do the rest. So basically ah. the the client chooses their destination and then we have a holiday consultation. We can have that discussion up to 3 times. So on the first discussion, we will I will find out what destination you want to go on, whether what, what health condition you have that needs to be considered. If you're a kidney patient, do you need dialysis or do you need a dialysis unit? Because you could just be a transplantee, so you're just a transplant patient you're just a kidney patient at whatever stage, so you don't need dialysis. Or, as I said, people with chronic Ill illnesses will find out what your illness is and what is required. We'll find out what type of holiday you want. 
you might want holiday where you just do strictly site visiting. You just go around and see all the sites. You're not interested in lounging on a sunbed. You're not interested at, on being on a beach. You just want to sightsee. So I find out your likes and your dislikes, what kind of holiday that you that you want. And then we will take it from there as to whether you need add-ons, whether you want a car, you know, or whether you actually want a cruise or you want to go by railway. How do you want your holiday? But I can do all of that for you. All right. So it's taking all the stress out of it. So you can deal with all the, you know, dealing with the red tape and and making sure that they've got all the the medical needs that they they require. So it, it, it sounds yeah. like it's it's a really great service to offer people that are maybe just putting off going on holiday because it seems yeah. like an uphill struggle, and it and it and it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be. No, so you, exactly. So why are you so passionate about doing this? Is it is it because you've you've come up come up against challenges in the past? Why why is it that you're doing this now as your business to help others find create memories? Yeah. I think it I think it's my own experience and the experience as I had that when I was in when I first started dialysis, it took its toll on me it was very hard for me to accept I then learnt and accepted it and when I saw a lot of people just go in and come in go in and come in and when I went around I actually took my time and I did the research and I went and I spoke to people one by one and many of them were like oh no I don't want to go on holiday just in case something happens, you know, I love the nurses here. They're so good. They understand me. I'm not going anywhere, you know. And then some of them were, oh, my gosh, if you go to Europe and, and you drink the water, you're going to get infected. I don't <sighs> want an infection, you know. So there were so many excuses that people were making. They may not have been excuses for them. They might have been genuine and, you know, really sincere. That's the reason why they didn't want to travel. But I think you need to do something. You need to get out of that rut if you're stuck. So that's mm. why I want to encourage them to go on holiday to help, to help themselves. It will help them with their mental health, with their well-being. They can make friends. You can have memories take pictures take videos you can have so much enjoyment from going on a holiday so that was the reason why and because prior to my illness I love traveling anyway I had traveled to quite a few different countries and I started doing little collectibles and stuff from different countries so it's a passion of mine because I love to travel and now that I see a lot of people who are ill that don't travel or are fearful of travel I want to encourage them to travel or to just get out or even if it's an overnight stay that alone you know just the traveling the journey there and just an overnight stay or you know for afternoon tea and you stay over and you come back it's just enjoyable just to mm. do that. So and it doesn't have to be a full-blown two-week holiday. You cater for just sort of, yeah, day trips or weekends away just to get, yeah. yeah I mean, it, we all need to get out of your your home because you need to have a different environment just to refresh, yeah. like you say, rejuvenate. And yeah. I think everybody everybody has sort of experienced a little bit of that just through just through the lockdown right and they were just yeah. desperate to get out so it makes sense that you know so many people are putting it off just because they have a chronic illness it doesn't mean that everything else has to stop yeah absolutely absolutely and i also just to let you know as well 
I can also provide carers for you. So if somebody has a chronic illness and it could be their parents that are always caring for them, I can also provide a carer to give the carer a break and oh. to allow a carer to come in and help and support you if that's needed. So, okay. yeah. You well, know, that, I, that is something that is something that it isn't as often spoken about. The fact that carers suffer with burnout too, yeah. so they too <laughs> need a holiday, <laughs> right? Holiday. They need they yeah. need a break. So, yeah. actually, you're you're providing well, you're providing quite a few services there. So, tell me more about your specific program that you offer, and how any of the listeners can get involved. Yeah. Well, I have a membership scheme that I'm in the progress of setting up. It's not quite there yet, but what it will what it will do, it will be a place, a safe place where you can chat, where you can network, where you can set your goals, set your action plans. I also have a saving scheme if you want to save to book your holiday. I do the holiday consult, consult, consult consultation. As I said, we offer three, three chats before you can actually book your holiday. So we know exactly what it is that you want. And yeah, and there's many more to come. Awesome. Yeah. And so with your with your business, it's called Fast Approach. Fast Approach. And and are there is there anybody else out there doing it? Or, or you know, how do you differ to, to your competitors? Well, basically, because I'm providing a very personal service, one-to-one consultation, whoever you work with will be your point of contact from beginning to end because the service that we provide also just to add in is is that we pick you up from your home we take you to the airport from the airport to the hotel if you have got any hospital appointments or this we take you to the dialysis or if the dialysis have transport, they will pick you up and drop you off. And we will also pick you up from the hotel back to the airport and back home. So that is why, like you asked a question here about destination concierge, that is where it all fits in because we do right. the whole, we provide the whole end to end service. Right. Because, yeah, that's it. Because there's, it sounds like there's just so many things involved and uh, things go, go amiss and it mucks up the whole system. Yeah. So, <laughs> and what, you know, what I found, yeah, what I found interesting earlier when you said, you know, you can go on holiday, there'll be a, a place for dialysis close to the hotel. Now, that, yeah, that I find actually concerning because okay. how big a problem. How many, you know, how big a thing is it? Because, I, you know, maybe I do know people that are struggling with this, but I, I, I'm not aware of them. Yeah. But from what I have seen, uh, I know there's, I, I know where there's a couple of dialysis places very close to where, where I live. It seems to be a much bigger problem than maybe is spoken about. Because yeah. like you say, going on holiday and to have a dialysis unit nearby, that sounds like it's a massive problem. Where are we with this whole chronic illness? Well, chronic illnesses in general, but specifically kidney issues. Yeah. Well, I, I personally do think it is a big problem. And that's why I found that solution to that problem because I've also of late been in, in a unit, although I'm, I'm a home patient, I wasn't very well. So I had to go into unit and dialyze. And there were a couple of people who wanted to go on holiday. This one particular man asked the nurse said, oh, I want to go on holiday. 
how can I go on holiday? And he bas and she basically said, oh, you can go to kidney care or you can go online and see if you can, you know, she, the nurse as actually wasn't willing to help him. You right. know, are they, so are they I, not encouraging people to go on holiday? I wouldn't necessarily say they're not encouraging. They don't take it on as their responsibility. Yeah. Because there's no longer a role within the department anymore where there was a travel coordinator. Right. So because there's no travel coordinator, they shove it because they don't want to take on that responsibility because they've got so much other things to, to do. So this is where I come in and say, I can help you, mm. come to me. So it's me putting myself out there, coming on shows like this, talking about it, spreading the word that there is somebody so here. you can do it you can do it there's yeah. there's no need for you to stay at home and just go from work to to the unit and home you know there is more to life and that you can actually enjoy yourself but it is allowed yeah, <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. It it's allowed good. you're allowed to enjoy yourself you're allowed yeah. to have fun goodness even if you've got a chronic illness go figure who yeah. knew, right? Who knew? <laughs> exactly. you, you've got to, you've got to, you know. You, I, I suppose you've got to make light of it, haven't you? Because you know, uh, you know, I get it. It's a, it's a serious subject, and you've got to have your ducks in a row, which is why I much rather have somebody else deal with it rather than you know make a mistake yourself. But this whole thing of you know, it's going to have a knock on effect to yourself, and if. More and more people in this country are are struggling with this because that that's, you know, I find that concerning that, you know, should there be a, a, a dialysis unit so close to any hotel? That is telling me that there's a lot of people out there that are suffering. Yeah, absolutely. Which is which is a massive shame. And how how do you with your own personal experience with it? I know that you you focus on your diet and you look after yourself as much as you can do you think people out there are really sort of getting the help that they need even with regards to getting the best help that they can get um i believe it's out there but it depends on where to find it do people know where to find it Within the kidney community, the ages are quite, you know, are quite vast. So mm -hmm. the young would more than likely know how to go to social media. There's a lot of community groups on Facebook. I also have a kidney community group that I would love people to join. And I'll share that with you mm -hmm. a bit later. So there's community groups out there. There are associations, kidney associations and foundations out there that you could go to. But there's also my website out there now that people can go to and get information about kidney disease and holidays and how to travel. All right. Yeah. And so I suppose, like you said earlier about the people are are, are naturally, obviously, going to have these fears. So, um, you know, what would happen? I suppose they might be thinking, yeah, but like you said, what if something goes wrong? And what what if they have any problems with the dialysis whilst they're abroad? So what would you be what would be your answer to them? Well, my answer would be is. Definitely trust the process that you're going through, especially at the dialysis unit. They will give you the best care ever. I myself have experienced whilst on dialysis abroad, I had a problem and I was given the best care. I was transferred from the local unit to the local hospital. I was treated and you know, I came back home and everything was fine. So the same way that you would be treated as if you had a problem abroad, you would, I mean, here within the UK, 
you would equally be treated with the best care. Hence, I always advise you travel with the travel insurance. So that would definitely give you cover. I'm also a point of contact. If you've booked the holiday, I am more than happy to contact your unit over here on your behalf to let them know that you have been taken in, into care by a hospital. So the communication is definitely there and I have backup, but I would just encourage you to trust the process, trust the treatment and the care that you're gonna get from the unit that you won't be left not cared for. And you know, and normally there is at least one speak, one English speaking nurse or doctor that will come and talk to you. So don't feel that oh, they won't be able to speak English. There normally is at least one English nurse or or a doctor that can speak All right. to you. So I suppose that 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 is that is probably what's concerning them the most, the fear of anything going wrong. And well, even with regards to, you know, their mental health, you know, it's it, it, how anxious were you when you first did it? Were you anxious about it or were you just excited? <laughs> I bet you were just excited. <laughs> I was excited, yeah. yeah. I was I was excited. I, I wasn't anxious or curious or, or, <laughs> or, or anything. So no. But, but, and, but for and, many, um, how yeah. would you sort of reassure them if they were getting a little bit, suffering with a little bit of anxiety about it? It's really to put their minds at rest. That you're going to get the help. You're going to get the help that you need. doesn't matter what that. I don't know why we think that <laughs> <laughs> everything's perfect here, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm not saying that it isn't. Oh, you know, you get you get good help. But it, it's interesting that, that people think that everywhere else is going to be the, – then they're not, you know, they do have hospitals. <laughs> they do have yeah, units, and uh, they are going to be looking after many, many people. Yeah. And the same care and the same treatment that I would have over here is what I had over there. And to be honest, you know, I was taken to the hospital by the firefighters. Oh, wow. It was the firefighters that actually took me to the hospital. I was. I bet I that was, made your day. <laughs> <laughs> they were lovely they were absolutely lovely so what happened was I was sent home and the next day the unit said that you will be taken to the local hospital and you'll have this treatment etc so that morning I'm expecting you know the ambulance or a taxi or whatever but it was the firefighters they turned up and they were like, oh, we're going to take you to the hospital. And I'm like, oh, but you're fire people. <laughs> and said, oh, yeah, that, but our, our role today is to take you safely to the local hospital. So I oh, was wow. supported by them and they were lovely. Oh, well, and where was that? People want a book now. <laughs> <laughs> and they waited all day. They waited all day. and took me home in the evening. Wow. It was absolutely lovely. And they shared so much fantastic stories with us, you know, about their life as, as fire fighters and, you know, and their And where role. was this? What country was this? Where were <laughs> Portugal. you? Portugal. Oh, wow. Okay. It was in Portugal. Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool. So, um, so where have you been? How many other, where have you, tell us your travels. Tell us your travels, Hillary, since... <laughs> Ever seen, and, and actually, first of all, I know mm. you sort of mentioned before about how your, the transplant failed. So how long, how many years have you been going on holiday dealing with this issue? For 15 years. So fi in 15 yeah. years. Yes. Can you share some of your holiday experiences yes. that you've had in that time whilst dealing with this? to share with people to say, you know what, you can do it too. Yeah. Well, I've been to quite a few countries. I'll just mention a few. So, and this is where I've also had dialysis. Mm -hmm. So I've been to Morocco. I've been to Turkey. I've been to Spain. 
I've been to Portugal. I'm trying to think of where else now. <laughs> um, well, this... I've, I've been to a few a few different places in Spain, but Spain's okay. one of my fa- one of my favorites. So one of the experiences that I had in Morocco that was really sad was in in Morocco at that time they were still recycling their their artificial their artificial kidneys you might as well say so you use a filter which is used as an artificial kidney and they were still recycling whereas here in the UK we use a brand new filter mhm and I did find that very strange because I thought, ooh, I wonder if that's going to cause a problem or give me any form of infection. But it was pretty safe. And the consultant assured me, you know, it's cleaned properly and everything was up to standard. So they did have a few, there, there, there were a few differences within the unit mm-hmm. in the UK to the unit in in Morocco and that was one of them they used re recycled products right and one particular mo- morning when i was on my way to the unit i saw this guy crawling on the floor and i was like oh what's, what's this man i said oh perhaps you know he isn't well or that's the way he has to walk he can't walk so he has right. to crawl. But little did I know, by the time I had got out the taxi and walked towards the unit, this guy that I saw crawling on the floor was crawling to the unit, oh. struggling because he needed dialysis. And because you have to pay over there, oh. You can't get dialysis how we do here. Uh, so he crawled. The nurses and doctors, they were so kind. They picked him up. They took him in and they gave him dialysis for like uh, three, four hours. And he was able to leave and go. But because uh, you have to pay, uh, a lot of people... They end up losing their lives because they cannot afford it and Mm. they don't have family that can help them pay for it. They don't have charities and stuff that will help them. So, you know, some of them will be. We don't know how lucky we are, do we? Yeah. We really just, and that's that's just another reminder. We are so lucky here in the UK that... Yeah you, yeah, you know, if you're ill, you can go and get it sorted. And the fact that you can, then even that, you can go abroad to these countries and still get treated. And it's yes, it's 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 very sad state of affairs where the people of their own country can't get can't get treated for free. Yeah. But that's why you have you know you have to be grateful for everything that you have and for 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 Absolutely. where you are because you have that advantage that you don't. I mean, have to pay for it. Yeah. So. Yeah. And to the listeners, yes. Yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> how all I was going to say was how how do they find you if they've been or if they know anybody? Maybe it's not them, but they can think of somebody that you think, oh, they haven't had a holiday in a long time because they've almost sort of given up on having a holiday because they have to go to the unit every single day. Mm-hmm. How would they get in touch with you? Well, you can get in contact with me via email which is Hillary Rose dot co dot UK. Sorry. So that, hang on, my, hang on. Hillary. Yeah, that's my website. At, that's my website. Web, website. It's no, Hillary. No, hang on. What's, what's your, your website is Hillary Rose dot co dot UK. UK. Yep. And you can contact me via Hillary at Hillary Rose co.uk you can also join my facebook group which is kidney warriors 
Ooh, it's just gone out of my <laughs> head. <laughs> if, if, it'll be in the list, be, list below. So yes, if you're just yes. listening to it, come to the podcast and you'll see all the links below. No, uh, yes, but Kidney Warriors, you. look up Kidney Warriors, look up Hillary, Hillary Rose. And yes. so, so the company, you're, you're, you're called Fast Approach, but it yes, will be I'm, under the HillaryRose.co.uk. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, everything okay. is there. So my name is Hillary Rose. Type in Hillary Rose co.uk. You will find me there, my business, and all of my social medias. Awesome. Will be so there. for you, where are you off to next then? <laughs> what have you got planned next? Well, what I have planned next is somewhere abroad. I don't know where yet. More than likely Spain this year. We haven't yeah. been there and my husband loves it. So more than likely Spain. But we've just had a lovely weekend in Glasgow. It was absolutely fabulous. And that was in aid of kidney research. And we went by aeroplane. We decided we're not going to drive. The, dry, the journey was oh. too long. We didn't want to take the train, although the train's not bad, but we took a flight and it was right. fantastic. Yeah, it's so for the weekend. So oh, nice. um, I'm happy to do the short trips and the short trips, because when you're a kidney dialysis patient, you can do dialysis for two days. You can not do dialysis, sorry, for two days and still have a good quality of life. Once you start to get into the third, fourth day, you're really putting your life at risk. So the, the weekend breaks are perfect, really, really good for kidney patients because you can just get away and have a lot. Right. Day. And not have to worry about anything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. But you you don't just, Kate, I mean, we've talked a lot today about kidney, but mm. you're with helping this, this, this doesn't just mean kidney patients. What sort of what sort of other illnesses, chronic illnesses, can, can you deal with, with uh, well, dealing with holidays? Yeah. Well, with the majority, people who were suffering with a lot of pain, I can't remember the word, people who suffer with a lot of pain, people who have cancer, people who have long life impacting illnesses, right. we will help with. And especially those with cancer who may not be living long we are more than likely to arrange a holiday for those people who just want to be by the sea be by the mountains mm. whatever their desire is we are more than happy to arrange and book a holiday for them right because again it's, it's it is all about you know it is all about quality of life and and you know, I can only imagine how, you know, just getting any kind of diagnosis, what, what an impact that's going to have on your mental health. Mm -hmm. And and I suppose it's, you know, it's, it's easy when you don't, you know, there's nothing going on. But to, like, oh, people just sort of own it and, and they don't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But uh, from an outsider looking in, you think, well... By having a holiday, that is just opening everything up because it is how we feel is going to affect how we recover some things if we're not going to recover from and we've just got to maintain. You know, I suppose, like you, like you said, it was when you accepted it, you know, we all have to just accept the isness of what is. Yeah. Whether that means you've just got to have long-term treatment in, in whatever form. But also that it doesn't just have to be that, you know, there is light at the end of the tunnel. There is, you know, whatever stage that you're at, uh, because it doesn't have to be that just getting by, just doing the day to day and, and going in for treatment constantly that you can still enjoy. We've all got to make them that make the most of it none of us know how how much longer we've we, we've got left so to to make the most of it and and have a holiday of a life it doesn't have to be a holiday of life though just to get away yeah. and have that stress-free and like you say you know it's amazing what a bit of sun does to you isn't it yeah. <laughs> sometimes that's all that's all we need because you know as soon as soon as it's bright out there I mean it's I have been out today it's 
it's actually yeah. quite nice, which is unusual yeah. for this time of year. But having that sunshine, that is just going to have a knock-on effect. So even a couple of days, a weekend away can can rejuvenate you just as much as a as, as a long holiday. Holiday, uh, absolutely. Because you, you will have those memories and you will have that feel good factor, yes. you know. And especially you go away and you meet new friends, even that alone, you know, can stimulate you and make you, you know, feel so happy that you've met somebody new and you build on that relationship, you know, and it, and they, that might even encourage you to go back again. Because yeah, you've sure. met new people and you can go back, you know, and, you know, for your mental health, just getting out of that routine, change of routine just helps, you yeah, know? Of course it so, does. Of course it does. Yeah. Everybody everybody needs that regardless. So yeah. you're catering for not just kidney patients, it's other other chronic illnesses, Nurses, plus the carers. Yeah. Because as oh, you mentioned yeah. earlier, it's, um, yeah. and, and we, we've had a couple of actually carers who've written books about burnout regard, regarding yeah. carers, because that is something that sort of gets overlooked or Look, exactly. you know, some may feel guilty about having to go going on holiday because they're a carer but you can help help with that too yeah I can help yeah. with that too yep awesome so an all round so what a change for you so what were you doing before you you decided to make this your I was basically I was an administrator working within the NHS <laughs> Oh, okay. And I, and I retired early. So once, as soon as I retired, I said, I'm going to do it because I've had this idea since 2007, you might as well say. And, you know, you kind of get stuck when you're doing your nine to five, you're doing your nine to five. You have these ideas and you want to set your own business up. You want to do your own thing. I didn't do it. And as soon as I retired, I was like, I'm doing it. I'm going for it. And I haven't stopped since. So, right. Yeah. But isn't it interesting? Yeah. You could have done this before. <laughs> I absolutely could have done. And I agree with you. Definitely. Isn't it funny? We put all these, we put all these limitations on ourselves. Yeah. And then finally, so it took for you to actually retire to then go and do it. Yeah. Um, you know, you could have you could have done it before, but it, it, I yeah. find it really fascinating that we 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 all can get stuck, you know, yeah. at, and it's not that we're stuck, it's it's a mental yeah. prison mental. that we put on ourselves. Yeah. That actually we weren't stuck. We could have done it, could yeah. have done it before. But it, it it takes something sometimes a little bit more drastic. Sometimes when people have lost their job or okay, you you got to retire, so then you could focus on the time. Some people find themselves, okay, they've been made redundant, and then it's okay, now is the time. But even that alone is a lesson to anybody that man, yeah, don't yeah. wait. If you yeah, have an idea, if you had what, a dream. I tell you what, I did start the business prior to actually, I did start the business, but I it was very, very slow. But yeah. it took off. I might as well say it took off. Took off. As soon. When you as, could focus, you could focus yeah, the time and, on and it. And I could dedicate more time to it. Yeah. You know, and how but, happy are you now where you're at well, right I now? I am the happiest girl on earth because I am now living my dreams. Yes. You know, I have put them into action. I'm focused, I'm determined, you know, and I've and and I've got the energy to do it. So right. you know, there you go, the, you're doing what you love, you're on purpose. Is. You're on yes. purpose. Yeah. You're doing what you love at the same time as helping others. And that's so I bet. I love. Yeah, I just want to see people transform transform their life. I want to see people move from being stuck or being stagnant to now being active. And it's all part of improving ourselves as individuals and you know, trying to look after ourselves, 
being healthy, keeping healthy, so keeping ourselves fit so we can travel, you know, and right. live life to the full. Just get out there and live life. But really, awesome. I just want to make people happy. Love that. And on that note, thank you so much for your time today, Hilary. Thank you for sharing your story. And I hope that inspires others out there to, yeah, go on, take that step, go and have a holiday, go and enjoy yourself. So thank you for that. And to the listeners, I will be back on Thursday with a Coffee with Karen. Bye for now. Coffee with Karen podcast, a weekly chat show discussing everything from holistic health to current affairs, from a mental, physical and spiritual perspective. Get your weekly cup of positivity with a sprinkling of woo-woo.